Alright, ladies and gentlemen, here I am, Jordan Blake, the Deliver Fleshman. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Alright, if you haven't seen many of my other videos, the, there's kind of an evolution to the newest videos that come out, so please subscribe to the channel. I'm always waiting for the most optimal, best, newest things that I come up with, and if you like things especially that are home, simple home remedies that are easy to do, do it yourself kind of style stuff building your own enemas, building your own colonics, um, you know, um, all kinds of things that you can just do, and uh, anyways, if you want to get some more, uh, please subscribe, and I'll, I'll keep making awesome videos here, but uh, this video here is specifically, I'm um, going to go on my monoatoms.com uh, YouTube channel, and uh, monoatoms, or monoatomics, or monoatomic elements, are not taught on in school in, in uh, physics uh, any of the sciences biology chemistry and physics are um, are they, they do not teach the uh, the M state the monoatomic state which is I'll briefly describe the actual molecular structure of the monoatomics and how in a way they're superior to your consciousness because they're like the evolution of um, of consciousness to further levels of light and love and uh, unity connection and it has to do with the body and that light frequency and I'll tell, go into further about that and how the sacred geometry of this molecule it's much like the evolution of nutrients from vitamins then to minerals then to antioxidants enzymes hormones and life force much like there's an evolution of the RNA to DNA and all that um, same with the monoatomic elements is that these elements are considered special elements. Um, they, are, they do not have the same molecular structure and that has to do with the electron bonding. All right? Every single element on the periodic table does not have any bonding electrons, pairs of electrons that will bond together. Every single bond in all the elements on the periodic table have separate bonds that exist, separate, uh, in, in, and, and they don't bond together. They're, they're in a state of polarity or duality consciousness, which is more along the similar lines of, of the, the, the Tao, which is, you know, the opposites, um, the yin and the yang, all right? So, so this, um, these opposing forces, the hot and cold, the light and dark, um, are, are part of our experience on this planet, but the monoatomic elements and the mono the M state represents the non-duality aspect of our potential to be on Earth and exist in a m much more non-dual, non-polarity consciousness, where it's more like the Buddha of equanimity, where you just you know you're in the Buddha mid mid uh, path, and it's just. Uh, you know, it's not too tight or not too soft, but it plays perfect, like the Buddha said. So this monoatomic elements was um, has been made for uh, traces back to past Egypt and all the ancient civilizations. Um, now, lately in the past few decades, monoatomics has been made with lye. Now, lye, broken down in its most basic form, is sodium hydroxide. It's the same stuff that is used for, for um, hy hy uh, making hydrogen. Um, you add that to the water, and that helps with electrolysis, um, where you're putting electricity through it, and that is causing it to turn into a gas inside. So this sodium hydroxide is nothing more than a normal salt, white refined table salt, that has been extracted out um, the sodium and then, and then there's a way to make sodium hydroxide, which I'll have a future video. So if you want to see how to make your own sodium hydroxide, to make your own what's called lye, it's called L-Y-E, lye. Now lye is a big part used in Drano um, for cleaning sinks and unplugging and plumbers. The uh, Drano has a high percent of lye, but it's also got other impurities and chemicals, which could be burnt out and made pure again. But with the, the, the urine here, the whole idea and the concept of my, um, my channel, um, YouTube channel, Europaths.com, with the plural, Europaths.com, 
that is all about urine and how it's a sacred substance and a sacred elixir, elixir and a healing agent, an anti-cancer treatment, um, anti-viral. Um, this is um, anti. Um, this is an alternative for vaccinations. This is an alternative uh, for flu shots. Um, this medicine of the urine has been filtered through your kidneys, liver, and then through your blood. When they study urine, it's found to be non-toxic to the body. Um, so the components are all listed. You can find the components. The, the only components really that are even looked at that may be considered toxic are the ammonia and the urea. Now urea is actually healing as well. It's a healing agent for the skin and it's used in all top level cosmetics because they know that the urea from urine is the, the best uh, skin product for creating healthy skin collagen, um, you know, uh, re uh, regenerating new skin and uh, giving it the nutrients at the microscopic bioavailable level. So back to making the monoatomics here, um, um, this is not going to be exact step-by-step -step video how to make it, but I will describe exactly how you can make it, explaining it. And if you get that, you can do it. It's all a matter of the pHs. Monoatomics form in, in, a, in, a, in a certain pH ratio. Other than that, they may be able to be formed in other ratios, lower, even acidic ratios potentially. But from what we know from it, in the past last decades, they've been using lye or sodium hydroxide or Drano. Now, the thing I discovered about urine and the monoatomic uh, cream is that a lot of people that were making it were using ocean water or natural salt, solar salt, such as Celtic sea salt, Himalayan sea salt, Atlantic sea salt, um, any of the ancient solar sea salts that were deposited over two million years ago. There's a high level of monoatomics in there as well as a natural source of iodine, which is a heavy metal detox which chelates bonds to heavy metals and flushes them out the body which is connected to decalcifying our endocrine glands, um, the pineal gland, the thyroid gland, the pituitary and hypothalamus gland, uh, the decalcification of the liver stones, gallstones, kidney stones, any other stones from other organs including heart stones which can form now the monoatomics here um, is, is made at a pH, they use the lye to bring it up to a pH of 10.62, alright? Now as long as you're within the range of 10.5 to 10.75, um, then you're in the range of creating the monoatomic elements of the pH that it forms at. Now 10.62 is almost exactly in the middle of 10.5 and 10.75. Um, so 10.62, the number 62 and 162 is a sacred number that's been used. Um, it, it goes to the Fibonacci sequence, um, the, the pyramids, it's all built in and connected. So this 10.62 is the ultimate pH which gives you the best conditions which are going to uh, create the possibility for the highest quality monoatomics. Now the monoatomics especially form and concentrate in the cream that exists at the bottom of your the fermented aged urine. All right, This is aged urine. Now the alkalinity can be tested with pH strips. These pH strips are available at health food stores and other places, healing places. Get them online. And these paper ones, um, there's different kinds. The ones you want are ones that are good for saliva or urine. And then this is going to tell you a pH. Now this pH right now is uh, is about nine. It's eight, four, eight between 8.5 and nine. Now this this pH only reads to nine, so it's basically a nine. It's closest to nine, so it's as high as it'll read. It's about there. And monoatomics is going to be um, forming, like I said, at 10.62 is the ultimate. So we're not quite there, but as as urine ages, like just like wine and stuff, as it ages in, the, in for for the fermented urine and the aging of urine, it alkalizes as it ages. It gets older. So this will become a hovering right around the level of. Uh, uh, 10.5 to 10.75.
So, unfortunately, the, the strips that I got only go up to a pH of 9. That's all they had where I went when I got these. But I have seen them where they go up to 10, or maybe even 10.5. Or even better yet, if you're really serious about making monotonics, because you don't only have to make it with urine, there's other products, especially the salt, solar sea salts I talked about, um, or the ocean, if you live near an ocean, is that um, you can get the digital readouts and then you get an accurate read it between 0.1 or 0 0.01 depending on what what kind you get whereas these are not quite as accurate but you can get pretty close within 0.2 on these colors with the pH strips now if you notice here as well it's much darker up top I don't know if you can see that but I will bring that over and uh, that's kind of part of the brewing process so that's got special properties and healing properties at the top too as well as the middles got it and they each have different properties so you can take some of this out extract it and the monoatomic uh, powders that can be extracted out of the base here this is more of a living um, monoatomic now I have actually I think I'm the first one to discover or at least put it on um, on Google and YouTube and all that is about the human biotic mushroom which is produced from fermented urine or aged urine. Now when this mushroom grows, it grows just like the mushroom of a kombucha mushroom. Right here, a kombucha mushroom. Um, this is a kombucha. When the first mushroom I grew, the human biotic mushroom, it grew right on the top just like a kombucha. And I tested the pH and it was above 9. So kombucha, when I test this and I make it, and I also make it with apples, apple juice, and uh, green tea. Sometimes I throw in some lemon, lime, or ginger too. And this is considered like nature's beer as well. But this I call the kombucha as Yogi's Kool-Aid. All right, this is Yogi's Kool-Aid, and I call the aged fermented urine uh, nature's beer. That's natural beer right there, and that alters your consciousness in a good way of healing your liver and, and healing your organs and, and all, like I said as a natural antibiotic, uh, antiparasitic, antifungal, antibacterial, very highly nutritious at the most microscopic bioavailable absorbable form to permeate the cell walls. So basically um, this is one of the, the elixirs of life here, the uh, elixirs of long life, of longevity, consciousness, um, and so basically in a nutshell the the whole process of this is that you, say you have a jar like this this is four liters every day if you are eating the most optimal diet especially to make the highest quality stuff you can but regardless this is an awesome experiment and you should do this whether you think you haven't detoxed enough or you don't eat healthy enough this is good no matter what this is all good stuff in here and when you produce these monotomics, this is some of the most powerful medicine for your own body. And you can be your own home shaman that heals yourself at home. So you collect, you collect this monoatomic cream here and you can use it for your skin. And you can use it for enemas, whatever you want to use it for. Soaps, anything. Creams, lotions, uh, sunscreen. And... Uh, and then and then you collect that up and then um, you basically you know eat that put it in the fridge and 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 eat it and it's really really good um, um, it's a really really good stuff so I'm going to be doing more of this and I'm going to show myself doing more of this and I do the whole enemas with this too and I want to see my future videos of that that you look them up uh, fermented urine enema and I'm all over that one and then I'll be doing it with concentrated like this. I'll shoot the video and this will have uh, produced the monoatomics. We'll extract the cream out of this one. Because look, this has only been aged for about three weeks now. And it's already an alkalinity of nine. Before it was, before I, I um, fermented and aged it, it was around a six acidity, acidicness. Um, seven is neutral, so it was one pH and acidic and now it is too above alkaline of neutral two in the alkaline and maybe more because this only goes up to nine 
So about this biotic mushroom, if you want to see me eat that mushroom, I, I created that mushroom from the colloids of my body, from the urine I did, and then three or four months later, the mushroom grew in that highly alkaline substance. The kombucha mushroom grows in acidic 4.5 to 6 pH at the highest. It's acidic. It's always basically acidic. You may find a way to get it more alkaline. Um, you can train it and evolve it. I have other future videos about evolving them. And then this one here grows in the pH of um, very alkaline, very close. The biotic mushroom is very closely connected to the exact pH of monoatomics being created. Now when you have a mushroom and you're making monoatomics, that's the difference of having kombucha that was in the store that was blocked, that was sitting without the mushroom versus the fresh stuff that you make at home that was sitting with the mushroom with the live enzymes and the live hormones and the live antioxidants and live probiotic bacteria to support the immune system uh, and to keep disease and to keep it alkaline and to keep it healthy. So um, that's interesting. This biotic mushroom, let's all do research. Let's see who can start posting biotic, human biotic mushrooms on YouTube here. Who, how, let's figure out how we can produce them every time. This one here, I added kombucha and I got more jars of my experiments. I was drinking kombucha for weeks before I was drink, uh, making, uh, fermenting, uh, sampling this urine. And so maybe a mushroom will grow out of this one. The alkalinity is doing very good so far. It's looking really good. So in a nutshell, what you do is you have a four liter jar. You pee in it. You pee in it until it gets full. If you have a kombucha or you go to the store, pour some in to give it a better chance with the spores to grow mushrooms. Um, while you're, you're getting your sample of urine, drink as much kombucha as you have. Make sure you start growing it at home. I got a video how to grow it from scratch. All right, it just search that video, um, how to grow how to grow kombucha mushroom from scratch, and you can grow the mushroom from the colloids of the tea you buy from the store, and you can grow the mushroom just from the liquid the tea that you get from the store. So it's awesome, you know. And then drink that, and then grow your own biotic mushroom, and be one of the first people to put this stuff out there, and let's spread it because this mushroom is one of the natural mushrooms for fighting all diseases and, and, and I really want to stress the importance of that mushroom, the monoatomic elements and the aged urine, enemas, drinking as a nature's beer and everything that this is the natural alternative to vaccinations, flu shots, chemotherapy and, um, and anything else you can think of. It's just so powerful. It's so alkaline, so uh, nutritious, and uh, got M-state monoatomic elements built in to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. I'm Jordan Blake, the Liver Flesh Man. We'll see you again, guys, next time. Like I say, you guys are the greatest. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.